Today, you're going to learn how to use Scroll Out, which is a micro JavaScript library for scroll detection. Oh, and hey, I'd like to point out this video's awesome sponsor, Skillshare.com, which offers thousands of classes in design, coding, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch my tutorial on animations, but you could watch this full course on CSS3 animations at Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is just 10 bucks a month, but if you're the first 200 students to use my very exclusive link below in the description here in YouTube, then you get the first two months free. All right, so let's get started. Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro. So today we're gonna cover a micro library as it's called because it's so small, but it is quite feature packed for detecting scroll. So what this allows you to do is attach uh, CSS animations to it. Um, and, and, and you could also use something like animate.css in conjunction with it. And the, the, the primary benefit is the fact that it's, it's, it's even more lightweight than the one that I covered in the previous uh, last month uh, called SalJS, which is a 2.8 KB library. But it allows you to do um, a lot of the same things and even more so. All right. So uh, checking back here, uh, this is available at github.com scroll out type in or forward slash scroll out. There's a guide that's going to show you how to do everything. I'm going to cover all the basics for this. And yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get started. But before that, answer today's question, which is when building landing pages, how often do you use scroll based animations? Is it 100% of the time or maybe only a few cases or examples here and there? Let me know in the comments. I'll let you know my thoughts and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's get started. Basically, uh, this is the main documentation here at scroll-out.github.io. Um, you can also view it on GitHub up here. And so this here, uh, the, the guide, it's gonna show you how to do a lot of different things. I'm not gonna cover all of them. I'm gonna cover just some of the basics that'll help you get up and running uh, to do most of what you want essentially. But there are a lot of different bells and whistles that you can tackle here on your own. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to install it from a CDN, which simply means we're just gonna copy and paste this line right here. However, you can install it via NPM uh, if you have a more robust project, obviously, um, and it'll show you how to import it as such. Um, so I have a um, blank folder, nothing in it, uh, with Visual Studio Code opened in it, and we're just gonna get some um, an index.html here, exclamation point, hit enter for basic scaffolding and then link enter and we'll paste in a reference to a main folder with a no a css folder with a main.css file in it um, we'll go ahead and create that folder called css and then a main.sass file all right so if you have the sass uh, extension here in visual studio code we can click watch sass on that file and then compile it down to a css file which this is the file index is looking for um, and we'll go back here and at the bottom, remember we have that, um, line copied. We're going to paste it here, right here. So that gets our scroll out ready to rock in our, uh, HTML file. So one thing I'm going to do here real quickly is I'm going to close that out and hit control B. Um, we're just going to get some basic HTML. It's going to be very simple. I don't want this to be the primary focus, obviously. Uh, so just, we're going to have section elements, four of them an h1 element in each one of them so hey what's up and then a paragraph element so p enter and then we're going to put lorem just to have some text some lorem ipsum text all right so by the way if you don't have access to the, some of these um these these shortcuts uh you can install these these different plugins here for visual studio code um they're handy so i'm just going to take this copy paste rather paste and there you go. I'm not even going to bother changing these up to make them unique. It's not relevant. Um, and then we're going to head into our main.sass uh, file real quickly. And I'm just going to copy and paste some rule sets in. So the body and HTML element, margin, zero, padding, zero, font, family, monster. I have that installed by my, on my machine by default. Um, otherwise, you'll have to use uh, the Google uh, imports uh, for that to import the font. Um, next, we're going to start with the uh, section element. All I'm doing is setting the height to 100, 100 uh, viewport height and then also with 100% padding, 6 cm, 
uh, the box sizing, the border box, and this allows us so that we don't have to do any calc functions as I was doing previously to account for the padding um, and the width. And then the color, just sending to white. Um, and then we have two elements that are embedded inside of here, the H1 and paragraph elements. And let me come down here and close that off. All right, so we're just setting a, a bigger font size and a paragraph. Um, we're setting the width, the 50%, line height, blah, blah, blah. Nothing very specific to what we're talking about here. All right, so now at this point, um, we can go ahead and hit Control-B, right-click, and open with Live Server. All right, and also there's one other area that I completely forgot in the, uh, the SAS file here. And that is this section. So at the very bottom. So we're just selecting each of the sec the four sections with the nth of type function here, background. And we're, I'm just using the background here to set different um, background colors that contrast well with each other. So this is our our page. You know, a lot of landing pages are kind of structured in these different sections of sorts. Obviously, mine's pretty ugly. I didn't spend any time on it. Um, but a common use case, obviously, for um, your landing pages are, you know, you want to be able to scroll elements in or up or do something based on the scroll. Um, so let's go ahead and start working with scroll out. So to, to get it working in the most basic fashion, and it's very useful, um, it's probably going to account for most of your use cases, uh, it is very simple. So let's go back here to index. Let's get rid of this welcome here. And what we're going to do is... We're going to, it, it really we're only cry, requires just three steps, all right? So the first is we're going to call our scroll out here. So script, and we simply call scroll out right there. And then depending on which elements in your HTML that you want to, to, to you know, the, the scroll animation behavior to occur, then we attach a data hyphen scroll attribute. All right, so to do that, all we do is put in the attribute of, uh, or on the element, an attribute of data hyphen scroll. And you can do this multiple times based on multiple elements. So I'll put one here. Maybe I'll put one here on the third section itself, like that. So I have one on the H1, and then on third section itself right here. Then finally, we have to uh, define some CSS for this, all right? So we specify the data scroll attribute like this, all right? And then inside of here, we can add either keyframe-based animations with the animation CSS property, or you can do transitions if you have simple ones. So we'll just do transition, and I'll say all, uh, for a period of two seconds. Then next, we're gonna have data hyphen scroll equals in. All right, so um, the, the scroll out library makes it so that uh, when, when an element is scrolled in, we can attach specific CSS properties to it. So we'll say opacity one. This means when it's actually scrolled into view, so we're going to bring it out of opacity zero in a second. So transform also. Let's say if you also want to apply um, a transform to it uh, for the transition. We're going to transition all, obviously, and we're going to transition the opacity. So it's going to fade in, and then we're going to do some sort of transform. In this case, we're going to do translate uh, x, and we'll say uh, zero right here. So that's going to, um, in terms of movement, uh, for translate on the horizontal axis. We're going to copy this, paste it. This is going to change to out. The opacity is going to be out, or not out, but zero. And translate x, we'll say negative 200 pixels. All right, so now at this point, it should work. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So I'm refreshing here. Look at that. Now the third section container itself, which we haven't yet scrolled to, should also do that sort of same animation. And yes, it did. And look, it keeps on coming back as we transition in and out. 
awesome, awesome stuff. So that right there is gonna help you uh, with a lot of different use cases. We do have a lot of other options um, that we can uh, attach to this though um, for controlling other parameters uh, and other specifics. So I, one of those is, uh, let's say for instance, uh, we only want those animations to occur once. All right, well, if we simply open this up into an array or an, uh, an object here, and we'll say once true. And by the way, uh, all the available options here, if you want to scroll, I believe it's all the way down here at the bottom. No, I was wrong about that. It's actually up here. There we go. Uh, we have our config configuration options. So um, these are all that you can use. We're going to just do um, once in threshold as an example here. But you, you know, at your own leisure, uh, look all these up and, and determine if what you want to do would be um, accomplished accomplished with by using one of these properties. So I'm going to do once true. So now when we uh, we save that and we go back and we refresh. Now watch, when I go back up, it should not occur again, and it didn't. And this won't occur again either, awesome. And then let's uh, let's take that one off and let's add another one. And we'll do threshold, say 0.5. And threshold, if we go back to the documentation because they'll be able to lay it out better for me, simply means that the ratio of the element that must be visible before it's marked as visible. All right. so. What we'll do, we'll say 50% uh, of the element that we've attached the data scroll attribute to must be visible before it's marked as being in or before you attach that animation or whatever it's supposed to do. So I, a really good way to demonstrate this is it would be hard on the H1 element just because the H1 element um, as it's currently um, in the browser is very short, uh, very small in, in height. So it would be hard to, you know, uh, to see the effect. We will, however, see the effect on this big section element because it's 100% height of the viewport. So let's save that and we'll go back. And once again, we come here, we can't really tell the effect because again, this is only so high. But if we go here, watch what happens. Normally, this would have started coming in uh, as it did previously, even right here, because this is actually where it begins, but it's gonna, we set it at 50%, so there we go. We're right at 50%, right in that middle point, point once we scrolled to that position. So obviously you can see there's tr a lot that you can do with this, especially if you start getting into more complex CSS animations with uh, keyframes and all of that good stuff. And what's really great, this is only one KB. Um, also, if you go back to the guide, uh, there are some other things that you can really integrate, which I'm not going to really um, show here, but you can use it with animate.css. So of course, animate.css is a very uh, popular animation library that uh, uh, provides you with a lot of different ways to animate different things. So bounce in, if you want, you know, on scroll, you want these things to bounce in, you can do that, uh, bounce out, uh, just a ton of them. If you view on GitHub, you'll see all of the class names. So when it comes to using animate.cs, I believe I covered this in a different tutorial a while ago, but when it, it's very easy. All you have to do is just import uh, through the CDN this right here and in the head section and then all you have to do is attach a class of uh, animate or bounce shake wobble whatever so oh it's yeah yeah to, to animate an element add the class animated now the way this works in relation to scroll out i uh, you simply go to the guide here you simply adjust the scroll out uh, method right here to this, and this will add the animated class that's necessary um, to make the animations work. So you would probably only add, for instance, uh, a class if you wanted to do this, um, class equals bounce. I believe bounce in was one of the available classes uh, for it. And then you would adjust that section um, down there. So uh, very easy. Of course, you would import the animate the CSS uh, link up there as well. 
but yeah, so hopefully I, you know, it's, it's only one KB, so it has something over salvage at JS, which is something I, you know, recovered last week uh, or last month rather. All right, so hopefully you found that helpful. Make sure you subscribe here if you enjoyed it and answer today's question, which is when building landing pages, how often do you use scroll-based animations? All right, I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.